everybody, I'm Peanut Butter Gamer, and welcome to my list of the top 10 Mario games. Now, I know what you may be thinking, Peanut Butter Gamer, you're just doing this video because of the recently announced Super Mario 3D World, or perhaps the recently released Super Mario & Luigi Something Something Saga RPG. Well, you're wrong. I just felt like playing some Mario. Roll the film! Okay, a while back on my Twitter, I admitted that for whatever reason, I had never played Super Mario Sunshine, and I don't think I ever got more mixed reactions to anything I've ever said. The responses were either, Whoa, why you no played Zomga Best Mario? Or, Um, oh, Sunshine Worst Mario Zero Ten Use Flames to Burn. Needless to say, I had no idea what to expect going into it after that. Turns out, eh, I think I'm actually somewhere in the middle. It was good, but some things about it were just... Off. For starters, Mario can no longer do the long jump, which was one of my favorites, but he can do this. So that's cool. He can also do this somehow. <laughs> These guys dare sully the name of Mario. They shall pay. And three, two, one. Mario missile is away. Bounce up, the old toad guys. And missile is on target. Target down, repeat. Target down. The level design also didn't feel as creative. I don't think I've ever played a Mario game where they literally had to show me where I was supposed to go. And there seemed to be too much of a focus on bosses and less on the platforming. I never got used to it in this game, especially not when I had to use the water jetpack. Thing. The parts I enjoyed the most were actually the parts where your flood pack is taken away and it teleports you to some very Mario Galaxy-esque levels. And then there's the legendary sand bird, who is a gigantic bird made out of sand blocks from Minecraft. I really just don't get this game sometimes. Disclaimer! While recording footage for this video, my 3DS capture card broke. So instead of something good, I hope you enjoy this footage of the exact same level throughout the entire segment. Thank you for your understanding, and uh, some... Okay, bye! Up next is Super Mario 3D Land for the 3DS. This is another game that I've seen some mixed opinions about. Personally, I wasn't impressed at all when it first came out. It didn't seem like a true 3D Mario game to me. But once I finally picked it up, I was surprised by just how good it actually was. Sure, it's kinda simple, sure it's kinda easy, but it's also colorful and fun. Also, the music is good. Also, check this out. Uh-oh, looks like I'm in trouble! But nope! Glitched through the ground. So what did we learn today? Never give up! Never surrender! Never let your 3DS capture card break, because then you don't have a lot of material to work with, and you don't know how to end your segment. Hey look, it's Pixel! It's a cube ferret- Whoa! Mario Party! Pretty much all of them except for the crappy ones. If you want a specific game, 2 is probably my favorite. But what can you really say about Mario Party? Especially when you don't have any friends around to play it with you. So instead, I've decided to do a super fast mini top 5 of my all-time favorite Mario Party mini games, so here we go! Number 5, Book Squirm. Watch out, it's book! Oh no! Number 4, Day at the Races. I honestly don't know why I love this game so much. Probably because I'm obsessed with gambling. Number 3, Ace is High. You're in a Plane, pew, pew, boom. Number two, Mario Mex. Mario meets Mex. That's awesome. Number one, Mushroom Mix-Up. Classic Mario Party game. Better get out of my way, Yoshi, or I'll cut you. I like it when it's black because that means you don't have to move. Last and definitely least, Bumper Balls. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It ends with the draw every time. Don't let anyone tell you different, it sucks. At number 7 is Paper Mario! Before I continue with this one, I'll have to admit that I haven't played too much of the Thousand Year Door, but it does look cool, so I'll just leave it at that. Paper Mario! Even though I already said that. I love Mario RPGs. There's something about them that's really fun and charming, and Paper Mario is no exception. You get fun party members, there's tons of secrets to find, and there's also cool mini-games and side quests, like the little oinks. They're basically little eggs that dispense from a coin-operated machine that hatch when you hit them with your hammer, and then they give you things. I'm no animal rights expert, but something seems a tad unethical about this. And the dungeons are kind of like Zelda dungeons, but usually a bit more simplistic. Oh no, there is a fire. What should I do? 
Oh. It's easy, but eh, it's still rewarding in a simple kind of way. And thus, Peanut Butter Gamer remained the most competent video game player of all time. But really, did anyone ever have any doubts? Up next is Mario Kart 7, but as I mentioned earlier, my 3DS capture card is broken, and this is the best footage I could get. So, I guess you're just gonna have to take my word for it. My bad. But hey, I'm still in first. That's kind of impressive, right? Next! Super Mario Bros. 1 is the game that started it all. It's one of the highest selling games of all time, and it even saved the video game industry almost single-handedly. But for my money, I'll take Super Mario Bros. 3 any day. And as I eloquently stated in my notepad app for my phone while riding on a plane, <clears throat> 1 was the original, but everyone remembers 3. Live action. I mean, they even played the game in Beethoven. Freebkin Beethoven! If that doesn't mean blah blah blah, then I don't know what does. Beautiful. Speaking of this scene from Beethoven, why are they both smashing away on their controllers? One of these kids must be really confused right now. Just FYI guys, this isn't a multiplayer game. I don't know if you figured that out yet. Also, Power Glove. LOL. Super Mario Bros. 3 is stuffed with color, happiness, and imagination. It picks you up and throws you into a world where platforms float, you can walk on clouds, and little mushroom men wait in tiny isolated rooms to give you flutes from treasure chests that pick you up in tornadoes that somehow transport you to some island with sewage pipes that take you to a different world where flowers and trees are dancing for some reason, and I don't know why, but I love it. And that's not even beginning to mention just how perfect and precise the controls and levels are. The game is so perfectly designed that with the correct skill, things like this are possible. Now I might not be that good, but that's not gonna stop me from trying. I'm gonna do a fly. Check it! Eh, screw it. Super Mario World is, spoiler for the rest of this list, my favorite 2D Mario game. Well, at least 2D platformer anyway. I know a lot of people prefer 3 and it's a close call for me, but there's just something about World that feels really special. Is it the music? Yes. Is it the graphics? Yes. Is it the everything else? Yes. There's such a large variety of levels and enemies and everything just feels so- Yes. It was also the first game to feature Yoshi. So, that's a thing. It really does feel like, well, a world. Mix all that with, once again, platforming that's virtually perfect. Heck, even the water levels in this game are kind of fun. Well, okay, maybe they're not that fun. Okay, I can't even believe I'm saying this, considering it's one of my favorite games of all time, but at number three, I have Super Mario RPG. While the story does have a serious side, it definitely doesn't take itself too seriously. Everything in this game is crazy and weird, from the enemies and characters to the items and abilities. It's all really wacky and silly. You also get some pretty over-the-top special moves, like Mario's Super Jump, for example. The enemies can also use special moves that sometimes give you status effects. You can be poisoned, put to sleep, and even turned into a mushroom for some reason. But my favorite by far is this one that makes the character sprites look utterly depressed. Aw, oh, cheer up. Things will get better, man. There's no need to be blue. Oh wait, you're underwater. So I guess there is a reason to be blue. Sometimes you also get bonuses when you defeat an enemy like this one that lets you do a gambling minigame at the end of the battle. I'm actually pretty good at these things. Let's see here. It's that one, I'm 100% positive. Another thing I love about this game are all the bosses. They're so strange and unique, especially for the Mario universe. There's a huge guy in a pogo stick, some Power Ranger clones, whatever this guy is supposed to be, and a derpy looking dragon that eventually dives into the lava and turns into this thing that legitimately creeped me out as a kid. Punch it in the face! And then you have this lady whose boobs jiggle every time you attack her. Forget Dragon's Crown, now this is offensive, people. Where's the outrage? Okay, topical joke, check. But my favorite part of the game is probably the sunken ship. You discover that the ship was attacked by some kind of monster that caused it to sink, thus implying that all the ghosts on the ship, and there's a lot, are the former crew who perished during the attack. It's kind of dark in a really awesome sort of way. I also love the puzzle portion, except for the three-dimensional maze part. Anyone who's played this game knows what I'm talking about. That thing sucks. 
Mario Galaxy! And... Or Galaxy 2 if you prefer. I'm not too picky on which, considering 2 is basically just an expansion for the original. I'm saying Galaxy 1 though, if for no other reason than it was the original. It was the first I played, and the experience of playing something old, something done countless times, something as redundant as Mario, but done in such a genuinely new and unique way is what I remember most about either game. And even though Galaxy 2 is possibly even better than the original, that's just something it can never be. Speaking of new, there's also new power-ups. Despite reading online about a lot of people disliking it, I really enjoyed the spring suit. You can also turn into a boo, which is cool. I guess. And then there's by far the best Mario power-up of all time, Bumblebee Mario. Okay, it's not that it's bad. I mean, I had fun using it. It's just, how did this idea even come to fruition? Who at the Nintendo brainstorming session was just like, I got it, Bumblebee. Who would ever expect that something that sounds as silly as Mario in space? could be this great. It even had new gameplay mechanics with motion control that I like. The ray surfing, for example, reminded me of how I felt as a kid when I first slid down the slide levels in Mario 64 for the first time. And there's also Mario rolling around on the ball that was pretty fun. Got this, I got this. Bomb bucket! That's right, somewhat predictable, but my number one Mario game is Super Mario 64 for the N64, obviously. The footage I'm using is from the DS port, but that's not necessarily because it's the best version, but more because it's just the version I have been playing the most recently. It's a pretty cool port, though. You can not only play as Mario, but Yoshi, Wario, and my personal favorite, Luigi. He can't wall jump, which I find to be pretty lame, but he can walk on water. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. One thing that I just love about Mario 64 as opposed to the other 3D Mario games like Galaxy is that each level has multiple stars to get. It makes each level feel more meaningful and you grow more attached to them because every part of the level ends up being significant in some way. It's also not just a linear get from point A to point B experience. Take Tall Tall Mountain, for example. It starts off with just scale the mountain. Okay, simple enough, get all the way to the top and bam, star. But then it gets more complicated and later on you're looking for a hidden wall on the mountainside with nothing but a brief clue to help you figure out where it is. Then once you do, you have to go down a huge slide to get the star. Oh, and by the way, make sure not to miss that term. No, 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 no. Actually, that brings up one thing I dislike about the DS version when compared to the original. It tells you where the stars are on the mini map and that just kind of ruins some of the experience experience for me. Oh man, I have to find a hidden igloo that houses the power star. Whoa, I wonder where it could be. Oh, there it is. Yay. A level that makes a great example of why Mario 64 is amazing is Shifting Sandland. There's a wall that looks like nothing, but it actually isn't nothing, and then you go in it somehow, and all of a sudden you're in a land full of sand. There's evil boxes and tornadoes and birds, and then you're flying with wings on your head, and then you accidentally die and have to start your recording over, and then you're on a pyramid, and then you're inside the pyramid, and there's even more adventure to be had. I mean, call me nostalgia blind if you want, but I swear they just don't make games quite this magical anymore. Hey everybody, I finished the video. How are you doing today? You should subscribe, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying. If you liked this video and you wanna see some other videos, here's some other videos. If you wanna see some more Mario stuff, well, why don't you just head on over down to my gameplay channel, PBG Gameplay, and let me play some, some Super Mario 64. And you can click on it right here. See ya.